Okay, this STEM activity challenge is called Marshmallow Shooter, or we could call it uh, Mini Marshmallow Shooter because we use the, the mini marshmallows. Uh, just a brief overview, what we're going to do is we're going to have a cup, we're going to have some uh, a balloon and some duct tape, which then we can load a mini marshmallow into the top. We can pull this back, and when you shoot it, out it flies. It flies out very quickly as well. So, and then the students would be trying to hit a target that we'll talk about a little bit later, but that's the brief overview. Let me talk to you now about the materials you'll need to run this in your classroom. I want to show you building one of these, what it's going to look like, uh, you know, what help you're going to have to give your students as they're building these, and then talk about the competition portion, and then we'll finally finish up with talking about some science. Okay, so the materials that you're going to need. First off, you're going to need a cup. I like to get the paper cups, you can call them cardboard cups, uh, some of the more solid ones. If you, if you grab it at the store and you squeeze on it and it's really flimsy and weak, you really don't want those ones. So I've found that uh, these work really nice. So I think you got this one at a Dollar General or something. So uh, cardboard cups work great. <clears throat> balloons. You're going to need balloons. And I like to get the 12 inch balloons. When you go to the store, common sizes, are, there's the 9-inch balloons, there's the 12-inch balloons. The 12-inch balloons work a lot better. Reason being, if you cut these and you try to put them on the cup, uh, you don't. it's a lot easier to put them on the cup and then to apply duct tape. If you go with the smaller ones, they will still work, but for younger kids, there's probably going to be more of uh, you needing to individually help them. So 12-inch balloons work really well. Next, you're going to need some duct tape. And what I like to do is I like to have a variety of duct tape. You could go with your, you know, uh, gray, you could go with a camouflage or brightly colored duct tapes. I like to give the kids some choice in terms of dressing up their, uh, their personal shooter. <clears throat> You're going to obviously need some mini, mini marshmallows. So notice here I've got a, a, a little mini bag where I throw some in there. If you get uh, a, an entire bag of mini marshmallows from the store, that bag should be able to last your entire class unless you decide to let them eat some while they're constructing. So think about whether you're going to allow that or not. But uh, ideally, one bag should be plenty for your entire class. And then again, I like to put them into small mini bags for each either group or each individual student. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. Okay, so after that, you're going to need some scissors. We need to cut open some part of the, the cup, so each group is going to need some scissors. And then finally, some construction paper for our target. So what I like to do is I like to make a target, and then at some point when we get uh, finished building these, or when some students are getting finished, they can start practicing. This would be taped to the wall, and students would have to stay in a certain distance behind, let's say 10 feet, that's where I like to go and then shoot, see if they can actually uh, hit the target, see if they can be consistent in hitting the target. Okay, so those are the materials you're gonna need. If you have a marker board and you wanna have the main competition, uh, the students shooting at a marker board like what we have behind me, you could use some markers and you could just fill in the, the bullseye with marker. That's also nice in terms of determining where the marshmallow actually hits. These mini marshmallows fly so quickly, sometimes it can be hard to see if it really hits a certain part of the target. Whereas if you have marker colored in on the board, once the mar mini marshmallow hits, it leaves a little mark on there. So that's kind of a, a neat way of doing things as well. Okay, so we've hit the materials that you're going to need. Um, again, balloons, how many of these you need, just think about the size of your class. And let's talk about that now. You can run this activity as uh, working in groups, uh, but what you're gonna have is you're gonna have all of the kids in the group wanting to shoot mini marshmallow shooter like every time. So think about that, think about your individual students, you know, or do they have the patience to wait? Um, last couple of years, I, what I like to do is I like to have just each kid gets their own and they, they just have a blast. So I, they still work in groups and building them and they're a team and that we can go with their best shot during competition. So we can do things like that, but think about with your students, do you want them each to build their own shooter or do you want it to be one group shooter? Okay, and that's going to determine how many uh, balloons you, you need. So as you're thinking about how many balloons you need for your classroom, buy some extras. Sometimes a, a student will be cutting them and then the balloon will rip some. doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So just make sure you've got some extra balloons on hand. All right, so those are the materials we need. Next, I want to talk about the setup 
and, uh, and go through there. Actually, let's go through a demonstration of building one of these. So what we've got is we've got a cup, and we need to cut out the bottom of this. So again, thinking about your students and how much you trust them, you know, with some scissors that they have, do you trust them to slide the scissors down through the cup and then start cutting out the top? So as I do this, I'm just going to start cutting out the bottom as I go around. And they don't have to get really close to the side. And it doesn't have to be cut out perfectly either. So if you look right there, the bottom's cut out. I would probably now push down on the sides a little bit just so that it doesn't interfere with the balloon that's eventually going to be pulled back in there. So now we're good there. So we've got our cup, hole on the bottom, and let's now grab a balloon. Again, I told you I like to do the 15 inch balloons. And we're going to tie a knot. You can either cut the top and then tie it, or you can just tie it right away. It really doesn't matter. So as I tie a knot in the bottom of the balloon, we're now good. We've got something to pull back on. Next what I'll do is I'll go to the other end and I'm going to cut, let's see if I can show you what we've got here. I'm going to cut the top part off. Okay, so maybe the top third. You could do the top quarter, top third, whatever. But that's how much I cut off. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to, I'm going to pull it out, wrap it, and I'm going to set it on top of the cup. Okay, I'm going to roll it over the edge. And there we go. So you can see how much it's overlapping by looking there. And now it's actually all set and it's actually ready to go. If we were to put a mini marshmallow in there, pull this back and shoot it, it would actually shoot the mini marshmallow, but the balloon would actually go with it. The balloon would go out a little ways. So we need to throw some duct tape on here. What I like to do and what I like to tell the kids to do is to use two pieces of duct tape. Okay, so I model one of these for the kids. So one piece of duct tape and then I'll put it right at, see if you can, if I can show this, right at the very top up there. And then because the cup is tapered, it will uh, go down to the side. So that's the closest side, but notice as I spin, it starts to go down. And so on the back side, on the other one I spin, it goes, it goes down as well. So now I'll spin it around backwards, so the, the part that's open right here, and I'll do the same thing. So I'll grab about the same amount of duct tape, finger like that and of course it's going to fall over on itself a little bit and we'll get it on there and we're good okay so now I got the back side you can see how we've got the top good and we're all set we've got our mini marshmallow we can take a mini marshmallow and how we shoot this we just take one, we drop it down in the top, just like that, it just sits in there. I reach up into the bottom and I grab the, the knot that I made, and when I pull this out, and then I can shoot it. So, obviously, these go very, very quickly. So let's pause for a second now, just because we've built this, we've talked about this. In your class, you're gonna make sure, or hopefully, you're gonna make sure that you're being very clear with the students, that they are not to shoot these, until it's time to shoot them, and they're only going to shoot them in the area that you've specified. So as you're thinking about your kids, you know, there's some that, you know, as soon as you mention this, they're thinking, ah, I'm going to grab this thing, I'm going to shoot Susie, you know, in the back of the head with a marshmallow. So make sure that you're being very clear with the kids about when they can shoot them and where they can shoot them. Okay, and I just shot that one, it hit the computer and it flew off the side. Remind the kids after they shoot something, they have to go and they have to pick it up. Otherwise, they're going to leave the classroom and you're going to have 100 mini marshmallows hiding all over the place. Okay, so now that I've got that little uh, warning out of the way, this is how we just built these. Next up, I, I told you we've got the construction paper target that you can tape to the wall in a back area. And uh, when people are shooting, I usually like to say fire in the hole and then they, they take their shot and then it, it hits the target, it bounces down, they can go get it, they can retrieve, the next kid's ready, they step up as people are watching so that no one's you know, down range when the mini marshmallow comes flying. So just think about your classroom, your setup, where is it okay for them to shoot? And what they're gonna do is they're gonna try to hit the target. 
So that's the setup for this, the construction for this, and finally let's end up with the science behind this. Now the science behind this is that if we take a mini marshmallow, we put it in there, and if we pull it back just a little ways, the mini marshmallow will go a little ways. If we put the mini marshmallow in there, we pull it way back, and then we let go of it. That one actually jumped out early. If we pull it way back and let it go, it's going to shoot out ridiculously fast. So the whole idea behind this is that these balloons, when they're being stretched, that's building potential energy. So the further we stretch it, the more potential we have. And then the second that we let go, that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So if something is moving, it has kinetic energy. If it's moving slow, it has a little bit of kinetic energy. If it's moving quickly, it has a lot of kinetic energy. And the more kinetic energy we have, the faster it's going to move in, possibly the more dangerous it could be. So do the students understand that the more potential we give it, the more kinetic energy we will get out when that energy is being converted. So that is the science behind this. And their goal ultimately is to hit this target. So they're going to have to find, you know, is it most, you know, is it most accurate as I'm pulling it back, you know, a little bit, a medium amount, or pulling it way back? Or when they pull it way back, does it sometimes shoot off, you know, a little bit and it's not that accurate? So a little bit of trial and error that your kids are going to have a lot of fun with. The last thing I would say is, you know, if, if they're transitioning to a, another teacher's class for something, or, you know, as they're going down the halls, I would make sure that they don't have these out because they're going to want to shoot them and show them to, to everyone they know. So think about your policy with you know, either sending these home, keeping them, uh, when are they out, when are they put away. But the kids absolutely love these. Hi, I'm Josh, also known as Science Demo Guy. If you liked the video that you just saw, and if you'd like to see more STEM activity challenges like this, along with the student worksheets that go with each activity, the materials that you would need to run this in your classroom, the grading rubrics and the teacher instructions, all of these as editable PDFs, which means if you wanted to, you could customize it for your specific classroom, then check out my website, sciencedemoguy.com forward slash store. What you'll find is that I sell these as individual products, and then I also sell them as packs at a discount. I have some very popular 16 packs and I've just created a 36 pack which I call STEM for the year. While you're there, be sure to check out the reviews that other teachers have left. We have hundreds of reviews from teachers that have loved incorporating these STEM activity challenges in their classroom and maybe you will as well.